Before we get to that interview, though, folks, I do need to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Bet Online. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back on for another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all of your pro and college football action this year. With a new and updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to their website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use promo code BELIEVE to receive your bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all of the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet online where the where the game starts. Welcome, welcome to this Believe in NFL Draft Prospect podcast. It is an interview edition. We have been running these, you know, once or once or twice a week, trying to give you an in depth look into some of the fantastic football players. Across college football, of course, we have an NFL draft slant on this show, so we want to bring you some of the top prospects that you should look forward to to 2022 NFL draft and beyond. And I have a young man I was talking to him before the show. Western Michigan has a defensive end named by Ali Fayed, who actually was almost in the 2021 NFL draft with the extra year of eligibility, decided to go back to school. And while I'm watching him, because I, originally I thought he was coming out, I just kept writing down number eight on my notebook, right? I need to talk to this defensive tackle. I need to do my research for him. And I found Mr. Ralph Holly, and he's pleas- he's nice enough to be able to join me today. A little bit of Ralph real quick is, hey, man, over the last couple of years, we're talking uh, three years specifically as a starter for Western Michigan. We're talking 29 tackles for loss. We're talking 14 and a half sacks. And we're talking last year in only six games, nine tackles for loss and three sacks. So he's been – Highly productive for the Western Michigan Broncos over the last few years. A school that has been putting out talents, you know, amongst the best, not only in the MAC, but, you know, just consistently putting out guys into the NFL draft every year. So I got now joined Ralph Holly, star defensive tackle, Western Michigan. Ralph, appreciate you, man. Join me today, brother. How's everything going? It's going good. It's going good, man. Thank you for having me on the show, man. Yeah, absolutely, Ralph. And like I was kind of telling you before we started, man, like I really wanted to. For this interview, I want to run it more as a you know start to finish of your career. So I went back to recruiting profiles. I went back to just a high school career at St. Mary's Prep. Obviously, you're a Michigan guy. You decided to stay in the home state, go to Western Michigan. So take me a little bit into the recruiting backgrounds coming out of St. Mary's and why ultimately Western Michigan and the Broncos for you. Okay, well, yeah, you know, I went to Orchard Lake St. Mary's Prep in uh, Orchard Lake, Michigan. Uh we were a big football, big football school, man. Uh, we played against uh, some of my teammates that I have now. You know, we played my first state championship. We played against uh, Muskegon, um, and it was a seven seven to zero uh, championship win. It was my first win, and then uh, moving on to my junior year, you know, we had we were stacked with players. You know, we had uh, Josh Ross, who's a linebacker for Michigan right now, mm-hmm. uh, KJ Hamler, who's a receiver for the Denver Broncos, Richard Bowens. Uh, plays corner for uh, Central Michigan and Sherman Dabney, who's a corner for uh, Bowling Green. So you know we were we were feeling good about ourselves, thinking we could come back with a uh, with a repeat of the championship, and and we did. We played uh, uh, I forgot who we played in the second second state championship, but uh, I remember. It, but the biggest one was probably the the third state championship when we played Muskegon again, and you know they had Ladarius and Khalil Pimpleton and uh, a lot of guys that that you know that I play against now at the college's level. Um, but, you know, that was just a really big game. Coming back for a three-peat, winning in the last seconds, no better way to end, like, uh, a senior year campaign in high school for real. And um, as far as me uh, getting recruited, was um, it was a big, uh, big thing that started for me. I actually got my first offer my junior year uh, on my birthday from Miami of Ohio. And, um, you know, that's when the, the other offers just started yeah, rolling in, man, for real. Um, you know, I ended up getting uh, pretty much the entire Mac. Uh, um, probably Ohio didn't offer me, but it was, that that was a uh, that was the past. But, um, yeah, you know, it was just they started rolling in. And one thing that really intrigued me about Western Michigan at the time um, was when they had they had P.J. Fleck and they had, uh, you know, they were on that Cotton Bowl run. Mm hmm. 
that was just that was a big thing that uh, shot out about me. And you know, just seeing the players they they had they had at Western and the determination to 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 go undefeated, like that's what really uh, intrigued me for real. And yeah, and Western and Western as far as like, because everybody knows the whole debacle when uh, PJ PJ left. And uh, he left on my official and uh, went to Minnesota and everything like that. Yeah. And uh, when that happened, uh, they brought in, yeah, they brought in uh, Tim uh, mm-hmm. and I got to know him. And uh, the one person that, that held me on to Western was uh, Lou, Lou Esposito, Coach Espo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was, uh, he was the D-line coach at the time. And, you know, I wanted somebody that knew how I play and knew – uh, really what, what scheme I would really fit in. And he's like, you stay with me, you're going to have success. And, you know, I trust him. I take his word on a lot of things. So. Yeah. And obviously it's, it's yeah. really, it's really um, worked out for the best, obviously kind of the, some of the accolades I talked about a little bit, you've had a very standout career so far for the Broncos. Rob, I actually wanted to ask you a little bit about, because I, I scout for the uh, College Gridiron Showcase, and we work with tracking football, which they do all the background stuff as far as, like, how many sports do guys play in high school? What is their athletic background? And I looked at yours, yeah. and I'm like, basketball player, track guy, two-time state tra- uh, shot putter in high school, which I, I'm a former uh, track and field coach, too, as a thrower coach. So, like, I was like, yes, I need to ask about this. Uh, yeah. When did you start into sports, man? Like, when did it become a love for you? And specifically towards football, like, when when for you did the love really begin? The love for uh, football, I would say, started for me uh, back I, – I played for a Little League team called the North Farmings and West Bloomfield Vikings. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really where it started for me. Um, I, I played running back until my maybe – sophomore year of high school. So I was, I was known as Ralph, the running back, you know, I had number six <laughs> back then. And yeah, I was just the, the little chunky running back that I got to truck everybody and everything. <laughs> but fantastic. when I got to, when I actually got to high, man, it was, it was great. And when I actually got to high school is when I started like exploring different sports. Cause I'm like, why not? You know, mm-hmm. why not? I mean, the school was known for different sports and everything. So I, I fell in love with track I wasn't fast enough with the other guys because I was always the big fella in there. But, you know, definitely participate in the fat man races, though. <laughs> I, I love it, man. I love it. But, hey, I always tell them, man, explosiveness yeah. and shot put. Like, people underestimate how athletic those big guys are throwing the shot put, man. They really do. They do. They do, man. And the whole the whole shot put and this thing, I, I end up being uh, pretty good at it. I won um, two state championships in uh, shot put back to back. And that was a, uh, that was a shock to me because it was something I was really falling in love with. And I ended up actually having some uh, D2, D3 offers for a shot put coming out of high school. I don't really remember what they were, but um, yeah, but I just really, I really wanted to broaden my spectrum with sports just to see how athletic I really was, you know, so basketball, track, football, I tried doing it all. I love it, man. I love it. And I, I think that people don't really understand how important that is, which is kind of just why I want to highlight that, man, because the best athletes in the world, the best athletes that go on to play in the NFL level, they're multi-sports athletes because no matter what they did, they were the best athlete. You know what I mean? So I think that's very important exactly. to just kind of highlight a little bit. And I wanted to ask a little bit about Coach Lester because you mentioned him, you know, obviously taking over for Coach Fleck, and he's the only atmosphere that you've yeah. really ever known outside of just the visits and whatnot. How do you feel like Coach Lester has done? Because he, I mean, he had a lot of pressure on him taking over what Coach Fleck did, but I feel like he has continued to really develop that program and keep it going in the right direction. Oh yeah, uh, for sure. I feel like you know it, the pressure's there. You know, becoming coming in as a head coach of a Division One program, you know, and it's the pressure that I feel like us as a freshman class had to deal with too. Those who chose to remain at Western. Um, and I feel like Lester's handled it very well. Um, he he really spends times with the player with the players to make sure that we he he wasn't just walking in a program and just trying to make it become a dictatorship. He actually worked with us. Uh, he he asked us different questions on how things should go on on multiple occasions, and I feel like he really 
he really took the player's point of view with him being a player from Western to like, I mean, Lester was one of his, one of Western's top quarterbacks to ever come through there. So, and it's really good having a, a alumni as our head coach, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And obviously I, I think he's done a tremendous job because like I said, a lot of pressure, but I feel like, he, you know, continuously we're seeing guys like the Wayne Eskridge come out of that, you know, developing mm-hmm. great football players and I wanted to really hone in on your game a little bit because I'll tell you, when I watched the film, for me, it was first step quickness. You can split gaps. Like, you are that true three-technique attack-style defensive front. Like, you are hey, you play an even front, four-man front, get him in in three, take the shackles off, let him go. Like, that's, for me, what I saw on you. For you, just seeing how the game has, your game has developed over the last few years, what do you feel like are your biggest strengths, and what are some things that you've improved on the most? Oh, yeah, I feel um, like since I've uh, been at the uh, Division One level, my my strength has have been my my legs, man. Like and a lot of people, um, a lot of people uh, say that the entire body is important, which I agree with. But as far as my position specifically, the flexibility aspect has has let me been able to have a twitch like no other. Like and a, and a get off is, is the biggest thing, you know. And the discipline and honing that skill of, of the takeoff and having to twitch off the ball is what gives a defense alignment the advantage over offense alignment. You know, getting your hands on him first before he touches you. And that's one thing that's that's really that's really been a big improvement for me. Um is my my get off is what cause uh is my get off in college because College, there's a lot of larger three techniques, a lot of larger three uh, D tackles and everybody has their own has their strength and weaknesses. My strength is my get off and the quickness that I that I've built up. And um, and another thing is uh, my biggest <laughs> my biggest thing that I've that I've had to work on is probably just like the flexibility aspect, like mm-hmm. of of football, and that plays a huge part in my game is being being able to bend and move uh, differently than offensive linemen. Yeah, and, and that that's a great that's a great point because I think what people also underestimate about playing interior defensive line is your body's getting contorted in so many different ways. Like just that subtle ability to get your body positioning back to staying square and to be able to slip gaps, and then also like you're playing on, as a pass rusher, right? Like people think bending the edge track as a as a as a uh, defensive end, but. I mean, when you're working that outside shoulder of a guard, you also need to bend that track as well. So I think that that is great understanding of what is real. The flexibility aspect, I feel like, is something that people need to talk about more. And I would love to ask you, I think I already know the answer to this question, because I feel like every time I talk to a defensive tackle <laughs> who's my, maybe a little undersized, there's only one answer to who is a guy yeah. that you emulate, who's a guy that you watch a ton, who, for you, who are a couple guys that you like to watch? <laughs> Oh man, you know the number one on the list is the goat, uh, Aaron Donald. You know he uh, he's literally the epitome of like of my game for real. You know him being six one, two eighty five, moving like that, moving guys at that way. You know it's you don't see it, you don't see it, and you know Aaron Donald puts on for us uh, smaller D tackles out here. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and I, I mean um, every every time another guy, I every, really, oh. another guy, Ralph, you can finish. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say another guy that I really uh, have always been a fan of is Ndamukong Sue. You know, Ndamukong Sue has been one of the most dominant defensive tackles uh, in the league. And, you know, he's always been somebody I've, I've tried to emulate my game against, especially my power. So... Yeah, I guess, I guess you loved when the Rams had him, had uh, Donald and Sue there for that one year then, huh? Ooh, that was amazing. That was amazing. Hey. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. And I, every time on Twitter they put out those lists, like who's the top – I don't care what position it is. If it's a coach question, I always put Aaron Donald. Because that's the answer <laughs> to everything in my opinion. So. Aaron Donald. <laughs> that's it, man. I put out – they did a top five, top five head coaches list. It was Aaron Donald every single one for me. I don't care. It's, it's, he's, he's the goat of everything. I agree completely. And I, I really am excited about seeing you – for an additional year, because I think that you're a guy that I think people know, I think people have heard your name, but for me with the full season, 
because I wanted to ask you a little bit about COVID, the impact, shortening the season for you. How difficult was this season? And just kind of looking back on it, how do you feel like you guys were best able to navigate the craziness? You know, COVID, yeah, COVID hit hard and it, it just kind of closed everybody off, um, closed everybody off from the facilities and, and everything like that. So it was a really a thing of me getting out and getting it on my own, you know, um, uh, we would we would have daily we would work out every day uh, in the morning and then have position specific drills that we would do in the afternoon, like just because all we could do was football at that time. I mean, so that's what we did. We just worked on our skill, honed our skills. And um, when we finally got the notice that we could have a season, you know, that's when guys really started hunkering down and uh, really getting at it. Uh, it was a, it was it was definitely really weird. Uh, it was a weird season having no fans and everything like that. Um, but our coaches really, they, they really uh, molded us and got us ready for the season with our, with our mini camp a, a couple weeks before the season even started. Um, our coaches really uh, handled it well and handled it very uh, professionally with the COVID restrictions and everything like that. Traveling was a, was a nuisance, you know, but at the end of the day, we, we wanted to play. So, yeah, and I, happen, I knew it had to happen. Yeah, man, I, I knew that with what the quality of the the coaches that you guys have, that you would have had it figured out. And I know that it was a lot of moving parts and you know, you know, obstacles to navigate. But I was glad that you got a, a few games in. I'm really excited though, moving forward here. How excited are you and the team just knowing that like you are heading towards what seems like it's going to be a more normal season? Thankfully. Man, it feels like it's about to be, you know, a holiday. You know, the first game is always a holiday, man. And, and it's it's like guys are preparing. We we were ecstatic. You know, we have Michigan first game, so you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a big in in uh in town in town fight. And but the excitement is there. I can't wait to attack a full season, man. Just us being cut off six games last year, man. We got a full full season, so I can't wait. Man. And I'm excited about that first game, and I'm glad you mentioned it. One, I don't like Michigan. I'm a Notre Dame fan, so I don't like Michigan. I'll be very <laughs> forefront about that, and I am definitely rooting for you guys in that game. But, I mean, you guys have yeah. Caleb Ellaby coming back. you got some dudes on defensive line coming back. you got some dudes everywhere coming back. I feel like upset alert for Michigan. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah, I completely agree, 100%. You know, I feel like we are very – I feel like we're coming in with a – with a chip on our shoulder, of course, but not even that. Just the returners we have are amazing. Like you mentioned, Caleb Ellaby, like he had one of the top quarterbacks in the nation. I mean, our receiving core is amazing. Our offensive line, are they're, they're great. They're great. And our defense line, you know, we have all of us coming back. Ali, Big Dre, Dre Carter, um, Brandon Fisk, and me. So we just, you know, we're just excited. To, we're chomping at the bit for it, man. Uh, I can't wait for it, man. And, and kind of the last couple of questions I, I want to kind of hone in on before I let you get out of here, Ralph, is is one, and, you know, coming into your final year potentially here at Western Michigan, for you, what are some goals that you have individually as a team? What's going to make this the perfect ending to your career? Man, to be honest with you, um, our team has this, thing, this saying that we have in this four, and that's the fourth championship in our uh, program history. i my dream is to win a college, a college championship, uh, uh, you know, as as far as my team goes, uh, trying to trying to win the MAC. That, that is a huge, uh, huge accomplishment, me getting that ring. But uh, for personal goals is, to be honest, just capitalize off of what I did last year. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I do have I, I'm, I'm striving for it for whatever I can do doing the best that I can do, God willing. And, you know, my individual goals is just prove everybody wrong for real. Yeah. Prove everyone wrong and uh, just try my best, man. I'm having fun out there too, so. I love it, man. And I'm, I'm really excited, Ralph, because, I mean, if you do like the just per game averages last year, we're talking nine tackles for loss in six games. I mean, you might have had 20 tackles for loss last year. Like, it was very possible in a regular season, you know? So, I <laughs> – 
I am yeah. looking forward to it, man. And my last question for you is obviously I'm a guy that thinks that you're going to get an opportunity to play on the next level. Uh, you know, what round happens, UDFA, yes. like whatever, ha- whatever happens in your future. I think that you are a guy that has the athleticism, the quick twitch you talk about, the the ability to affect the passer and, and just as a penetration player up front. So my last question is, knowing that you have that potential, one, when did yep. playing professionally become a dream for you? And then number two is, what type of blessing would it be when it finally happens? Man, uh, to be honest, I've been wanting to play professional football since – and since I can remember, I, since I was a young kid, you know, football has always been that 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 go for me and just seeing guys out there making plays, having fun. And, you know, and it's their job is, is just like it's bliss for me. You know, I couldn't imagine anything else. And, you know, if I when if the opportunity does present itself in the future, you know, it'll be a huge blessing for for me and my family and just my community for real. And, you know, it's. It's there and, you know, that it didn't really hit me until it didn't really strike me as a, as a, as a, as hard as, as I thought it would until I was, uh, until like my sophomore year and, you know, I, different people started talking about me, started seeing my name on the on television a lot more. Like I've never seen that before. And, you know, it just hit me and I was just like, you know, this is something that's, that I really have a chance to do. And so you know, I've just, just been putting my all in it. <laughs> love it, man. I love it. And again, Ralph Holly, star defensive tackle for the Western Michigan Broncos. Make sure to tune in this fall. I think Western Michigan is going to have a fantastic season. I think Ralph's going to be a big reason why. Ralph, appreciate you, man. This was fantastic. Just get a little backstory, brother. Wishing you the best this fall. And I really yes, do sir. appreciate just a little bit of the time today, man. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me.